I'm Catherine Ross, and I'm here live from the floor of the NYC with Jim Kramer. Jim, what's top of mind for you this morning? China on, healthcare on. Uh, China on because there's a series of reports out which say that the number of deaths has leveled off from the virus. Uh, healthcare on because Bernie Sanders is viewed as being a very weak candidate. Uh, the other candidates would not necessarily uh, really crash health care. So what you want to watch is you want to watch UNH and you want to watch Carnival. Carnival is now very much a China on stock because they have the Westerdam uh, and they have the Diamond Princess. Uh, Westerdam found a port in Cambodia. No, there's no Corona on that, but still there were five ports to turn them down. And United Health, uh, that's Bernie would get rid of United Health. That's part of his plan, and it's up ten. So I think that you, when you see those, and then you see the banks rally, and that's because, again, Bernie is viewed as a weak candidate, and the other candidates are coming on. What, this, what people are saying is, you know what? We're going to be okay China, and we're going to be okay election. Uh, that's a lot of positives. The, there have been a lot of fear, and the fear is dissipating rapidly. What would it take to get Wall Street to support a Democratic candidate? Well, look, I think Klobuchar is, is eminently supportable by Wall Street. I think Buttigieg, I think he could be a little less than Klobuchar. I think that the surprise is Klobuchar. Uh, people are now starting to say, hold it, what do we know about her? Uh, that's not unusual to see something like that. Uh, she's, I would say, someone who people think could be electable. But more importantly, let's just go cut to the chase. I think people say with this divided field that's going to stay divided, and with Bernie Sanders' people not willing to vote for anybody else, the real winner was President Trump. And I think that that's why the market's really up. President Trump, China, and the idea that the Democrats are imploding. Remember the way, imploding meaning they have too many people. I mean, Sanders wins, but did he really win? Klobuchar has moved up, but did she really win? Mayor Pete is really up there, but did he really win because of Iowa? Uh, the most moderate guy, uh, Biden, is now gone, so to speak. And this is a disarray field, so people feel that that is exactly when Trump can prevail. And I, look, I, I know that the numbers for the last few days have been down the, uh, for the virus. They have changed the way they treat it, apparently, in China. They've been more aggressive early on. I get the sense that Wuhan, they fired a lot of people. The party fired a lot of people who were running the Wuhan. Uh, healthcare system. Maybe they brought in some pros using the WHO. Obviously, I'd like to see the CDC in there, but there's a change of foot. And if you can see the death stabilize, and then you get J&J &J and Moderna to have a vaccine for next year, then you could see that maybe the Ray Dalio view that for a year or two we won't be thinking about is really important. Uh, I, I always say if you haven't bought yet, now you have to wait for a bit of bad news. And I think that the way that you read the front pages, there's going to be bad news. Wall Street's much more hopeful about the virus than Main Street. Yesterday when I asked, Jim, you said that Bernie Sanders means that investors should be taking a look at oil. And this morning we got news from BP saying that they plan to be net zero carbon yeah. by 2050. Now, they didn't really give you much of a... Uh, you know, they're talking about, they, they mentioned methane, and, and you know, let's just be clear, I had parsley on. Parsley's cut methane to 5%. Here they're talking about they're going to start measuring methane. I got to talk to BP because I don't think that's the way you get to 2050. Uh, remember, they are a fossil fuel company, and if they want to get to, uh, to uh, carbon neutral, uh, they should plant, I am not kidding, a billion trees. Now, there is room, like you could go to the deforested area, of uh, the Tamil deforested area in India from when the British deforested it, uh, when it was a colony, and you can plant millions of trees there. You can obviously go back and plant in, in the Amazon. We have, you could go replant in Australia. There's a lot of places, but Mark Benioff is leading the charge, and Ivanka Trump is also leading the charge to plant, you know, a trillion trees. And that's the way um, that we would suddenly start looking at BP as an offset. Because I think that in the end, it's very hard to just be carbon neutral and be a carbon company. The trees are the way to go. And I'm going to, I have a corporate governor's conference. I'm running June 11th. It's my own conference. And I'm going to ask, it's about uh, business as the greatest force of social change. And I hope to ask BP how they really intend to do this. Because I've got to tell you that Parsley Energy has been adamant that there's way too much flaring, way too many things being done under the cover of the president, not not caring. And that's, you know, that's what's really going on. The president's not caring. 
So you don't think that millennials will kind of give BP a second chance because no, of the No, no, not at all because Macondo was so bad. We own BP up for Chapel Trust. We did it because they have good dividend and because they're, uh, they really have the best earnings profile, but that didn't matter at all. One of the reasons why I've said that fossil fuels are history and that you have to sell them into the bounce that I predicted uh, is because they are going to become stocks like at BPs like Altria, which is that the dividend doesn't attract anybody because it doesn't, it's not about yield, it, it, it's about ethos. And I think that there are a lot of people on Wall Street who are very slow to understand the difference between yield and ethos. Not me, that's one of the, again, my conference is going to be, I've really been working on this conference a lot. I'm working on so many things right now, I'm working on a new drug, I'm working on a new mezcal, and I'm working on the conference, and I'm doing all these things because the clock be ticking, and I got to get- You are constantly I busy. have to get more done. But just to repeat, fossil fuels are history. It's very nice that a congressperson to ask that to the chief, but the, the there's a bounce. Uh, and the, I predict the bounce because Trump is winning. Uh, and the, uh, nothing that happened in New Hampshire makes me feel uh, that you uh, shouldn't st stay long the oils until they go up more and then blow them out. BP is our Real Money Stock of the Day, so head on over to realmoney.com to read more. And you can read Jim's take from this morning over on his column. He called Casper the unfriendly IPO. Yeah, I mean, Casper, what's interesting, j and J's down. I think j and J's a real chance in the vaccine. They're very serious. Um, what we needed, what moves markets is supply and demand. And there's, everybody wants to say it's the Fed or this and that. The, the Fed plays a role. Obviously, you don't want to fight the Fed, but supply and demand is really what I've been watching. And the Casper IPO was a first-class disaster. Uh, how anyone thought, thought that beds could be technology. I mean, Mattress Firm was a disaster. Steinhoff then bought it. That was a disaster. Sleepies, which was bought by Mattress Firm, that was a disaster. Uh, you go, uh, the, the companies that are competing directly, um, including companies owned by Serta, are, are immense. They needed the money really badly. Uh, and when you see a stock break down like that, what it says is what happens is the syndicate deaths go to these uh, masters of Silicon Valley with the unicorns and say, look, we really screwed our clients. We really hurt them. Don't give us anything unless it's about to make money. Um, give us a DoorDash if it's about to become profitable. Uh, but don't come with any more of these stocks because we, we burned people. So when you see a deal like Casper, you should go buy Salesforce. Because what it means is that there's not going to be a plethora of new high growth stocks because if we don't want high growth, we want growth with a path, with a path to profitability. And Catherine, a lot of these companies don't have it. The unicorns are really, I mean, take a look at, take a look at um, Airbnb. I mean, okay, so let's say the coronavirus is indeed over. Um, it, you, do you want to go to a, uh, somebody's house with Clorox wipes because you don't know how long it could be on the surface? I mean, I, I urge people to read the article about the chalet. There was a gentleman that was at a conference, then he went and infected everyone in his chalet. Uh, and, and I say this because I refuse to believe that this thing is done. I love that it's cordoned, uh, but the sloppiness is incredible. It's someone almost broke out of the quarantine area. Um, the Westerdam, they just found a port in Cambodia, even though there was no virus. We still haven't solved the princess, diamond princess off of Japan. And yet we've all decided that it's, that it's, there's a cure and there is no cure, okay? There's no cure yet. There could be a vaccine, that's very likely, but uh, not, for, <coughs> not for this year. And the Chinese are serial liars. Uh, it does seem to have changed better since WHO got in. But I, I keep coming back with the Tony Fauci said, which is you, all you're doing with your quarantine is trying to buy time so that the Chinese get things under control. Uh, it is not a cure. In the interim, companies are coming out right now and saying, who is going to make the numbers? PVH came out and said they will make the numbers, which therefore people then said Ralph Lauren will make the numbers. I really like Ralph Lauren. PVH has been sneaking up. And you have the HMOs, I happen to like Centene, by the way. Uh, then we have CBS. We have to see how CBS fares. There's always people who dislike CBS, so we have to worry about that. Carnival did put out a press release warning about the impact of the coronavirus on its business. And Jim, you tweeted right after that that Westerdam is the key. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, when you have a ship where there is no coronavirus 
and yet five ports wouldn't take it. Well, is that anti-U.S.? I mean, I was trying, there was a subtle thing in the twi- Twitter. What I was trying to say is, maybe it's because it's a U- it's U.S. owned. Okay, it's not domiciled, not flag, whatever you want to call it. It's Carnival. Carnival owns it. And sometimes I wonder whether we're being punished because we're Americans. And then it's, I, I raise the question about: Are these companies, countries, really allies? I mean, how could they not take our ship? I mean, I, I, it's unbelievable to me that they wouldn't take our ship. It's, it's really, I mean, it's time for President Trump to say, listen, you wouldn't take our ship, we're going to pull this out. I, I thought that a lot of it might have been um, revenge against the president because he is not liked over there. But I thought that was just disgusting. They should have let that ship in. All right, Jim, thanks so much for joining us. we got us some today. other things I want to talk about. Okay. One is, is that... Uh, Lloyd Blankfein tweeted about Bernie Sanders, that he'd be terrible. So then you start thinking, well, Sanders would be terrible. Um, and so Sanders is going to lose. So what do you buy? You buy Goldman. And that's an action alert stock. And here comes Goldman. It's moving. Um, the biggest China stocks are Nike and Starbucks. So if you're really going to open China, then you should go buy Starbucks right here, right now. So if you're really bullish, you can buy Nike at 101. But you should just be buying Starbucks hand over fist because if you remember, Star, God bless you. If you remember, Starbucks did not guide, uh, and that was because of China. So if you really think China's getting better, you do that. One last one. Uh, I know people are furious about me. You and H up twelve. See, that's Bernie. Uh, about Bed Bath, knock it off. Jimmy Chill says this. Uh, the company did something really stupid. They had no guidance. They wouldn't give guidance, and then they felt that they had to cut guidance. And, you know, what that says to me is there's still a bunch of knuckleheads, but the CEO is going to get it right. Uh, and there's a lot of hope. Boeing is hopeful. That's why we like GE so much. I think Boeing's about to get it. So overall, what people are betting is this. There's tremendous stimulus done by the Chinese. Uh, companies are going to get a V, boom, boom, carnival. Uh, the president looks like the putative winner. Uh, this is what the market's saying. Uh, so you can buy UNH. You can buy all sorts of Centene. Uh, and of course, I think you should buy CVS. And uh, the cloud stocks are doing incredibly well. So the um, there is the only thing that is really and, and the bank stocks have all caught bids. The only thing that is really weak um, would be the uh, true defensive stocks. Because what's their defend if the economy is not slowing down? All right, guys, there you go. You've got some stocks to take a look at. Yeah, I mean, Jim, look, it's a, I think it's a very exciting day. Um, but I am deeply concerned that the market is not prepared for some corona shock and i would love to have this is this is the period where some people could say we're almost through which would be great but we cannot survive an uptick we have to have continue downtick in terms of death and in terms of new cases it could happen and that would be fabulous All right. Thank you, as always, for your sage advice. Guys, thanks for tuning in. We are now heading over to our Action Alerts Plus daily rundown show over on ActionAlertsPlus.com. The the (laughs) portfolio has some earnings coming up tomorrow, so we're going to talk about that. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm Catherine Ross, and we'll see you tomorrow.